Okay, so on your driving test, you may be asked to do one of two bay parking maneuvers in a, in a car park location. So you may be asked to um, drive forward into uh, the marked lines of a bay and park the car before then reversing out safely from that bay. Or alternatively, you may be asked to reverse into a bay um, of your choice and then drive forward out of that bay safely. Um, and so if we, we refer to the DL25 um, test guidance uh, form and notes, um, the key things uh, that the examiner will be looking for is that you will need to demonstrate that you are able to have the mechanical car control skills to have the car under full slow speed control, so it's under your full control. Um, and you also need to be doing this whilst taking full observations um, and acting correctly on anything you see. So if anyone, any pedestrians or any other moving vehicles enter the area where you're performing the technique, um, then you should uh, take appropriate action and pause if necessary. And so then the only other real requirement is that you do finish up within the bay lines. Um, and for the purposes of test day, it is very much um, the rules of the test, like the rules of tennis. Um, your car is either in the bay or it's not within the lines. Um, if it is within the lines, then my recommendation would be that you stop there and we'll play to the rules for test day. Clearly in real life, um, it would be preferable to have the car nicely positioned um, within, centrally within the bay to avoid damage to cars, the cars next to you. Um, but for the purposes of a driving test day, let's play it to the rules. If you are within, genuinely within the lines, not on the lines, then stop there, quit while you're ahead. Um, but if you are not, you haven't got it successfully within the bay lines on first attempt, you will need to make a careful adjustment having first taken um, full observations. But hopefully if you've practiced um, sufficiently before the test, um, you'll be getting it nice and central within the bay lines. Okay, so there are loads of great videos on parking um, from lots of other driving instructors already um, up on YouTube and other channels. Um, and some of those are absolutely fantastic. They've gone to the, uh, the trouble of having drone footage um, and graphics and all sorts of details on there. So um, not really looking to add to the clutter of, of videos that are already out there. Um, but as with all things, it's always good to, um, whoever your instructor is, to, to take guidance from other people and just a different explanation um, may well unlock something that you've been struggling with. Um, so um, I train, well, I get driver training for myself. I train with a number of different instructors um, and they all bring something new and different to me. So have a search, see what's, I'll put some, some links to the ones I've found helpful um, in the description as well. Um, but as with most things involving parking, as we said with the parallel park video, um, there are a couple of recognized techniques um, and again, as with parallel parking, most of this comes back to geometry and the angles at which um, a car's uh, steering angles work. So once you've been taught the technique, um, there is a little bit about just practice, practice, practice until it clicks for you. Um, for some people, it comes very easily. For others, um, trying to do things in reverse, um, they can find it a little bit confusing to start with. Um, and so it's just working through that. Um, and whilst uh, many videos claim to be the ultimate guide to parking, um, the only secret I've got, the only secret tip I've got is practice, practice, practice. Once you've got the technique and you understand what you're trying to do, then it is just practice and finesse um, the technique for yourself. So the first thing we're gonna have a look at um, in this video is just, um, just to try and add a little bit, because normally the videos will start with some reference points and points of turn. Before we get into that, we just want to uh, explain what is actually going on so we can relate those, those um, reference points that we're referring to, to the car and the wheels that are being turned. So if we just get the car started. So all cars will be slightly different in the way they are set up, um, but they will all have um, a, what's called a turning circle and a steering steering lock. So, um, okay, so just to explore steering lock, at the moment our car wheels are pointing straight ahead. Um, and if we wind on full lock, which is in, in this car is one and a quarter turns of the steering wheel. So that's half a turn with a pull, half a turn with a push another quarter turn and the steering wheel will go no further so that is hard lock full lock and the wheels are now all the way over to the right so if we now check in all round and very carefully move the car forward with the steering wheel held on full lock 
car will go round in a circle and it's a mechanical lock so the position is fixed and so the car will continue to go round in that circle on its fixed arc and that is its turning circle and the turning circle of every car will vary just slightly as will the number of turns of the steering wheel lock to lock so as I say this Ford car has uh, two and a half turns lock to lock so from all the way to the left to all the way to the right requires two and a half turns of the steering wheel so from lock in one direction to get it back to the center we have to unwind one and a quarter turns of steering so just to uh, illustrate that point if we bring the car gently to a stop in this straight ahead position now to get my steering wheels straight i have to unwind first quarter of a turn and then one full turn and hopefully the car will now move straight ahead good so that is how a car's steering lock works and very simply if we um, put the car on full steering lock and get the arc in the right position we will then end up in a parking bay so there's no uh, there's no witchcraft there's no magic it is just a mechanical steering lock so if we get our starting position right um, and this is where the reference points you'll have seen in other videos come into play if we get our starting position and our reference points correct the car will always do the same thing okay so if in terms of finding the reference points on your own car, we almost do this in reverse. We start with the car nice and straight in a bay. So if I drove this car forward now, we would end up where we want to finish in the bay, between the bay lights. So position your car like that. And all we're gonna do is wind on full steering lock. As you can see, the wheels are then turning. And I now have steering lock on full turn to the right. I'm selecting reverse gear. Checking the ring, move the car, and then keeping that steering lock on very carefully we reverse out of the bay. Okay, so we've now reversed out of that bay, keeping the steering lock where it is and we are perpendicular to the bay and uh, just to illustrate the point if we now take first gear and I drive the car forward now we will end up where we started back in the bay all right before moving the car again from inside the car and we'll then see how we find our reference points okay so just viewing that again from within the car so we can just prepare the car do full observations and just check it is safe to move the car even though the car park appears quiet let's do full observations i'm just going to come back about halfway out of the bay to start with keeping it steering straight but now, quick hands, we are going to wind on full steering lock. So that's full steering lock. And slowly bring the car around until we get to perpendicular to the bay line. So we are nice and straight to the bay we want to go into. And if we just pause there, we're going to secure the car. I'm going to leave the steering lock on, switch the engine off, we're just going to jump out of the car and have a look at where the car is in relation to the bay. Okay, so the key thing to understand here is just how far away from the bays on the right the car actually is. So if you imagine, if we wound on left steering lock and attempted to get into the bays on the left, that just won't work. Um, if you can see how much further away we are from the bays on the right hand side. So we need that space, we need the arc of turn to enable the car to go into that bay. So that again is crucial 
in terms of the setup point and where we position the car when we approach the bay. Now it's always easier because we're further away from bays on the right. If bays on the right are available, it is easier to select those. And, and it is your choice on driving test day, the examiner will ask you to pick a bay of your choice. But there's one on the bay that is on the right that is free, that would be easier. If the only bays on the left are available, then you must position the car away from those bays before attempting to turn into them. So the steering lock works. So let's jump back in the car and see that now. Okay, so we're back inside the car now. Haven't changed anything. The steering lock is, is left as it was. Um, but this is a bit that, uh, this is where your reference points come from. Now, um, your instructor will probably have given you reference points for, for their car. Um, every car is slightly different, um, but when identifying them for yourself, get your car into this position. Um, and then it really is a case of looking for a reference point in relation to one of the bay lines. Now, typically, um, on most cars of this type, um, a good starting point, it will be somewhere around the area of the door handle. And that is purely and simply um, in relation to where they fit door handles. Um, and so it's the relationship of where that handle is in relation to the wheel. It's got nothing to do with the door handle, obviously. It's where the front wheel is. So, um, and again, just to be clear on this, when you're looking for a reference point, it is how you see it from your normal seating position as a driver where your head is. So we're not trying to do rifle sight lining up the door handle. Just to be clear, it's just a visual approximation of where one of the bay lines appears to, if you, you, know, you extended the bay line through the car, where, where would it um, be on, on the door? And so somewhere around that door handle would where it would appear to me Clearly, if you move the seat forward and sit differently, it will appear differently to you. So it's, these reference points are individual things, but approximately it's likely to be somewhere around that area of the door. Um, trial and error, if you want to put a little sticker there just to mark it, um, that's a good way of um, um, exploring it. And then if you go overshoot the bay, you move this and so on and so forth. But uh, we've got the steering lock on. So if we restart the car now, first gear, check all around that it is safe to move the car and particularly this mirror and shoulder check area, you must check all around, but this is where we're about to move the car. So the final place we want to be looking is mirror and shoulder check into that area before very slowly moving the car forward. And given that nothing has changed, the outcome will be the same. We start now looking towards the front and you can see the bay lines ahead. You can see we are now straight with those bay lines. So at that point, I straighten the steering wheel and drive forward to finish the manoeuvre. Parking brake on, out of gear. And if we were parking, we would then switch the engine off. Second part of the manoeuvre um, is then to safely reverse out of the bay when it, when it is safe to do so. That'll be the next part of the instruction. Um, and so again, we would prepare the car by selecting reverse gear. Crucially, look all around and check that it is clear to move the car and then what we're going to do is re reverse the car out straight for about half a car length you can imagine if I wound on steering lock now and cars are coming apart either side of me if I just wound on steering lock we bash into the car either side of us and um, so the first thing we do having checked it's clear to move is to reverse the car back straight about half a car length or until this pillar gets somewhere near the end of the parking bay then we rotate the steering wheel And straighten it back up. So that is finding um, how to find reference points on your own car. Okay, so for the forward bay park, you'll typically be bought, brought to a public car park, public access car park, and you will be asked to do a forward bay park into any bay of your choice. First thing to note is that car parks will invariably have low speed limits for safety. Lots of pedestrians, lots of cars reversing, um, and they will typically have one-way systems, one-way arrows. So observe all of those um, road markings and regulations as you would any other um, road situation. Now, first thing to do, if we're going to do a forward bay park, you pick the bay. So it's your choice, the examiner doesn't dictate it. 
but as we've seen from the previous setup um, it is far easier to turn into a bay on your right if there are bays available to the right which there are here today we're spoilt for choice but if there are bays available to the right it is easier to select one of those bays to the right because you have more space to make the turn and also everything is visible to you through your driver's window so your perspective of the bay you're turning into is very much here in clear view rather than if I'm trying to go into a bay on the left I'm looking across the bonnet trying to see where the bay lines are and any cars I'm trying to park next to so a bay on the right will always be preferable so having checked all around before moving the car forward we bring the car along nice and slowly gently bringing it to a pause at our point of turn reference checking all around checking particularly the right mirror and my shoulder my right shoulder where the danger is i'm about to turn the car to the right get that steering lock on quickly before unwinding it once we are straight in the bay if you look in the fisheye mirror there you'll see we are nicely positioned within the bay line So, just to demonstrate that, first thing to do is to check all around, and we're moving the car in a very controlled way. And what the examiner wants to see is you're aware of everything that's going on around you, so frequent head movements. And so we're going to turn into a bay on the right. So we're slowing the car right down, we're checking, and our final check would be this mirror and shoulder area where we're about to turn the car. If there was anyone behind us that would benefit from a signal, we put a signal on at this point. Today there is no one there. So then, quick hands getting that steering lock on. And then smoothly unwinding as the car becomes straight. Secure the car out of gear. Okay, so once you've, um, once you've got your driving license, um, you can park, um, as long as it's safe, you can park any method that you, that you see fit. And um, so if I was in this car park and I was going to um, Forward Bay Park, probably drive through to the second, the second bay, so I'm well, well positioned um, to leave the car park, exit the car park. Um, though for the purposes of your driving test, the examiner, although you're doing a forward bay park, what they're also very interested in is your ability to reverse the car out of the bay. So on driving test day, um, for the purposes of the test, you're not permitted to drive through to the second bay, so you must stop within the first bay. So just to illustrate that, we must stop and have the vehicle finished within the the bay lines in the distance of one bay um, because as we said the next instruction will be then when it's safe to do so if you can reverse out so we then prepare the car with reverse gear check all round reverse out half a car length before gently winding on that steering lock Okay, so the same principle applies when we're looking at a reverse bay park. So we've positioned the car squarely in the bay lines. Um, and so all we're going to do is wind on full steering lock. Check all around. Moving the car. And so all we're illustrating there is if the car remains on its full lock, it will always do the same thing. 
Okay, so we're just going to pause now for a bit of a static briefing on what we've been looking at in car, um, just to bring a different perspective on the same subject and um, maybe explain it a different way and unlock it for, for, for some people. Um, <clears throat> so as we said, on your driving test, you may be asked to do a perpendicular or 90 degree turn park into a parking bay, either forwards or backwards. Now, unless you're taking your driving test on the Tron light cycle, um, most of the cars you'll be driving won't make instant 90 degree turns. And so what we've been looking at in car is a car's turning circle. Um, and so as we demonstrated with a slow speed donut, if you wind full steering lock in one direction onto a car, the car will rotate in a circle. And that is known as the car's turning circle. And so um, London taxis, for example, are designed to have very tight turning circles to enable the cabbies to uh, do a U-turn, a taxi turn in the street. So if a fare jumps in and says, I want to be going that way, not the way you're pointing, they can rotate their taxi very efficiently in a tight space. Similarly, most city cars, most small um, first cars will have been designed for the same purpose. They're designed to operate in the confines of modern cities and modern, modern parking areas. So they will have relatively tight turning circles. Other cars which have been set up for other priorities um, won't have such tight turning circles. So again, it's just something to be aware of when you're considering your first car, thinking of the type of driving and where you'll be driving. Um, it's one of the factors you may want to consider when um, exploring your first car. Okay, so just to visualize this now with our toy cars, um, the most efficient way to turn a car through 90 degrees is to wind on full steering lock in the direction you want to go. So if we're driving into our car park, the little white car comes in, and we are currently perpendicular to the bay we want to go into. So if at this point we wind on full steering lock to the left, slowly steer the car around, that is the most efficient way to rotate the car through 90 degrees. Now, at this point, if we continue to leave our steering lock um, Full, full left lock, we continue to drive the car, we would end up at an angle and not in the bay. So all we're looking to do, as we said, is to start it from this position, rotate it through 90 degrees on full steering lock, and then once we get to that position, we then, in the case of the forward, would straighten the steering wheel by winding off a quarter turn and a one whole turn of uh, steering to position the wheel straight ahead, and then we merely drive the car into the parking bay. So the car will always do the same thing. As we said, the, the steering lock is a mechanical lock. Um, if we wind on full steering lock, it will always do the same, the same thing, the same turning circle. Um, the challenge we have is that we introduce an element of human error into our positioning. So our starting position will rarely be the same every time. Um, we'll get it slightly different and that's by virtue of being human we introduce human error so a little tip to overcome that is to give yourself the m maximum room that is available to you so if we can start the car the further away we start the car from the bay lines the more wriggle room it gives us the more margin for error so if we start over here um, and we make our 90 degrees of turn at this point as you can see, we still then have a significant distance in which to make any minor adjustments we need when straightening the car to get it into the bay lines. In contrast, if we start very close, so we get the car very close to the bay lines, and then start winding on our steering lock and coming around, First of all, you'll see we're cutting across the bay next to us, which isn't a great idea, particularly if there's a car parked in it. Um, and then we also come round and we end up running out of space at the end, so the car is at an angle and we're not nice and straight. So, um, so key tip is to start, the starting position for this maneuver is to get as far away from the bays as you reasonably can. However, we need to be mindful of other road users operating in the car park. So if the black car is following us into the car park and we start swan necking over in this direction, it's not unreasonable for the black car to think we're going in that direction and start coming this way. And it's in these situations when confusion 
and car park collisions occur. So as with any other situation on the road, it's very important that we're aware of other road users around us and we communicate with our signals what our intentions are. Okay, so exactly the same principle applies if we want to reverse park into a bay. So if we look at this, uh, the car which is currently in a bay, and we then look at the center point of its turning circle, which is on this bay line here. So if we say that's bay line number one, bay line number two, and the car is going into the bay bounded by bay line number three. So if we take that in reverse, if we drive our car into the car park, and we position the center point of the turn on a bay line, so in this case we've positioned it on this bay line here, and we count back from that, it becomes one, two, three bay lines. We know the car is going to end up in this bay. So just to explore that, wind full steering lock on the on to the left in the direction we want the car to turn, rotate it round through 90 degrees, and it's going to slot nicely into the bay. So at this point, having turned through the 90 degrees, we would then unwind quarter turn and one turn of steering lock to get the wheels straight and continue to reverse the car back in. So that method is commonly referred to as the 90 degree method or the three bay line method for that reason. So just to recap um, and to bring to life what we're going to be looking at in a moment in car, we would uh, drive in, identify the bay we wanted, and then count one, two, three bay lines past it and get our center of turn in that position, wind on full left steering lock, direct, or the direction we want the car to go, very slowly rotate the car through 90 degrees, straighten the steering wheel and reverse it back into the bay. In just the same way as um, with the forward bay version of this park, um, if you if the further away from the bays you get, um, the more room, the more wriggle room you give yourself if you do make a minor um, inaccuracy in your starting position, um, you then have a good distance between the here and the end of the parking bay to make very subtle adjustments in your steering to straighten the vehicle into the bay. <clears throat> so that is forward and reverse bay parking using the 90 degree method. Okay, so the 90 degree three bay line method, the reverse bay parking, um, is absolutely great if you have the space available. Um, it's a very simple one steering movement, very simple way of doing it. So it's a great, great technique to have in the toolkit. Um, but as the DVSA essential skills points out, um, there are situations where you won't have that space available. And in that scenario on page 245 of essential skills, um, they, rec they uh, recommend an alternative technique um, that's worth having in your toolkit to supplement um, the, the 90 degree method and give you options for tighter parking situations. Um, and that technique, which I term the, the turn away method, um, instead of doing making the 90 degree turn in one continuous arc, we do it in two stages. So first of all, we will turn the car away whilst driving it forward. We turn the car away to a 45 degree angle. So we've made half of the 90 degree turn and then we take the other 45 degree angle as we reverse back in. So just to explain that in a little bit more detail, first thing to note is that in contrast to the 90 degree method where we wanted to get the position of the car as far away from the bay as possible, um, the setup for this technique is to get the car as close and as straight to the end of the bay lines as we can. And the reason for that is because we're going to be turning the car away, turning it away, so we need space to turn the car away. So we position straight and close to the end of the bay lines. We then wind on full steering lock to the right and rotate the car to a 45 degree angle to the bay itself. And if you look here, that positions this rear wheel close to the edge of this bay line here, our target bay line. And so in reverse, it's this wheel that we will be pivoting around. So getting it close to where we want it is really important. And that's what this technique enables us to do in a relatively small amount of space. So we turn the steering wheels all the way to the right, to turn away. Now we would rotate the steering wheel all the way back to the left. 
So the car's wheels are pointing in this direction, and then as we turn the car around, that brings its nose straight and completes the second half of the 90 degree turn. Once the wheels, uh, once we're in this position, the car is straight, we can straighten the steering wheel by winding off a quarter turn and one turn of steering lock, and then very carefully checking all round, reverse it back into the parking bay. So that is the 45 degree method. Um, and again, it just gives you options to have both of those um, techniques in your toolkit. It gives you options um, in tighter parking spaces and other scenarios. Okay, so Roadcraft also gives us some, some good guidance in chapter six on manoeuvring at low speeds. Um, and section paragraph on steering in reverse. And as they say, it's actually easier to maneuver a vehicle when reversing rather than going forwards because the steer wheels are at the back. Um, and this may seem counterintuitive, but once you've achieved a competency in the technique, um, it's easier to be precise and to make steering movements at low speeds um, going this way around in reverse than it is to go forward. However, as they observe, um, as you increase speed in reverse, it becomes increasingly difficult to steer accurately. And so that gives us our mantra of slow car, quick hands. So when doing a reverse maneuver, we want the car to be really creeping on um, slow speed clutch control. So slow car, but quick hands on the steering wheel. So pull push steering um, to get the steering uh, angles on as rapidly as, as we can. Um, but so the key thing here to notice, you know, a, a number of novice drivers will find um, maneuvering the car initially more challenging, and so they will default to their comfort zone of forward bay parking. But as Roadcraft explains, once you have mastered the skills, um, parking in reverse is actually far more precise and far more efficient um, than forward bay parking, and it also has a number of key safety benefits when off operating in busy car park areas. So it's really worth persevering with this in these early stages of your driver development. Find a patient accompanying driver and an empty car park um, and invest the time up front now um, and it will stand you in good stead throughout your driving, um, your driving lifetime. If you think every journey you go on will require some parking at the end of it. Um, so spending a few additional hours in these early stages of your training and mastering reverse bay parking is well worth doing um, and so it'll make uh, life easier for you throughout the many years of your driving career. So we'll now go on and have a look at uh, the techniques we've, we've described in theory. Um, just for any engineering students watching, appreciate this is a slight um, simplification um, with our little model here. Obviously, um, when we wind on um, full, full steering lock in a real car, um, the, back, the back wheels aren't, uh, aren't steered, and so they don't follow precisely as it does uh, with our model here and you may have experienced that on a on a tight left hand turn when the front wheels will make make the turn around the corner and you drag the rear wheel um, over the curb line so a slight approximation with our uh, with our um, toy cars here but um, I think it captures the principle of what we're now going to go on and look at in car so let's get back to the car park Okay, so typically um, the reverse bay park, if you're going to be asked to reverse bay park, it's highly likely to be the first thing they'll ask you to do on your driving test, and it is likely to be done in the test centre car park, or whichever test centre you're using. So uh, worth uh, having at least familiarised yourself with what that car park looks like. Probably won't be able to go and practice there, because tests are so busy at the moment. Um, but certainly go and have a look, um, look at the layout. And so here, if we're looking, we've got a tele... Um, a lamp stanchion and we've got some curb stones so if I'm picking a bay wouldn't particularly choose to have uh, the bay right next to the curb stone and, and risk um, mounting or hitting that curb stone so make it easy on yourself by your choice of bay so if we're going to do a reverse bay park um, there are a couple of techniques which can be used so we'll start by having a look at the turn away method this is the 45 degree method or the turn away method um, and so we're going to look to park into one of the bays just beyond the light stanchion and the curb stones. I'm not the one next to it. Um, and we're going to use a method where we turn the car away to a 45 degree angle from it, um, which then helps the, get the rear tire close to it. Um, and then we're going to reverse into that bay. So as we want to turn away from the bay lines, the first thing we want to do is get as close 
as possible to those bay lines to give us the maximum space to our right to turn away. So having just done full observations, checking it's safe to move the car forward, I'm gonna move it forward and I'm gonna get as close as I can to the end of these bay lines and get the car nice and straight. Checking the mirrors all round. Um, and now I'm going to slowly move the car to a reference point, which is this door handle here. Um, and I'm going to look to line that door handle up just approximately with one of the bay lines. So now that appears to me that if we continued that bay line through the side of the car, it would appear to me to um, go through that door handle, roughly, just the roughly as you go. Okay, so then looking back this way, I'm now, <clears throat> I'm gonna just dry steer for this. I'm gonna wind on full steering lock. Normally we would get the car just moving slightly, but for the purpose of the demonstration, I've wound on full steering lock, checking all around, particularly checking this mirror and the shoulder area, as I then turn the car away to approximately a 45 degree angle. And as I do that, if we now look back in this mirror and the fisheye mirror, you can just see the bay line coming into view. Where the door handle is, can you see the bay line there? So we'll stop there, and that becomes our target reference. So I'm now going to start reversing the car towards that bay line. And the objective, the full observations as we do this, is to get the back tyre as close as we can to that bay line. So you can see we're getting it closer, 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 looking all around as we do it. So the tyre is nicely coming round into that bay. If we now look out of the front window, we can also get some clue from the bay lines ahead of us that the bonnet of the car is nice and straight with those bay lines. So at that point we would stop because we've done the difficult bit, we've turned the car and got it straight perpendicular to the bay lines. We now look at the steering, I'm going to wind off quarter of a turn, one turn to get the steering straight, and then reverse it nice and smoothly back into the space, having checked all around. Checking our fisheye mirror there, you can see we're in the bay. And then the next instruction will be when it's safe to do so, move off. So again, we prepare the car, do full observations, check it's safe to move. Drive it straight forward about half a car length before tuning on the steering lock. So if there were any cars parked either side of us, we wouldn't be bashing into them. Okay, so we're gonna have a look at that again. And this time, rather than the um, 45 degree turn away method, we are going to use the 90 degree method, um, which is often referred to as the three bay line method. Um, and this is quite a common um, method taught for your, for your driving test. I mean, effectively, this is the forward bay park technique that we've done previously, um, but done in reverse rather than turning forward. So this time, in terms of our approach and our setup, whereas for the turn away method, we got very close to the bays on the left to give us the, the space to turn away from them. Um, on this occasion, we're also gonna be parking in the bays on the left, um, but our setup position will be to position as far away from them as we can without causing confusion with our positioning to other uh, people using the car park. But here it's one way, so we're positioning as far away from we can as the bays on the left. And so if this was the bay we were going to select, um, we then drive past the bay, and so we count the bay lines then as we go past it. So that would be bay line number one. Uh, that would be bay line number two. And then at bay line number three, we stop when the car gets to the reference point that we have previously identified. At this point, we take reverse gear. And again, I will just dry steer just very quickly for the purposes of the demonstration, but normally we get the car just moving slightly, but we wind on full steering lock. We then look all round and slowly reverse the car. 
And now if we start focusing on the fisheye mirror, I'm checking all around as well. But you'll watch the back of the car comes around and you can see it getting closer and closer to that bait line. And okay, with a bit of beginner's luck here, it's, it's going in pretty much on first attempt. But at this point, if we weren't quite going into the bay line, this would be the time to make any adjustment we needed to um, with our steering lock. Now we're on full steering lock, so if I was missing the bay line, I couldn't get it any tighter than that. So I can't wind on additional steering lock. But in this case, we're um, if we look in the fisheye mirror, we're getting pretty close to it. But so if we were too tight to that line, this would be the moment to be winding off a little bit of steering lock and straightening your steering just slightly. But as it happens, that's coming around quite nicely. I'm checking all around. Now, if we look out of the front window, we can see that the car is neatly lined up with the bay lines in front of us. Um, and most car parks will be aligned, but not all. So this again, it's another reason for getting down to your local test center and just checking that they are, uh, they do marry up, they are all aligned. Now the car is straight. If I look at the steering wheel here, I unwind a quarter of a turn and then one whole turn, my wheels will be straight. So I then look all around, particularly out of the back window, check nobody's walked out in front of me and then very carefully take the car back straight into the bay. All of which is done very nice and slowly. Put the parking brake on, take it out of gear. And to that last point, there are no prizes. Um, so there are no Ken Block awards um, for getting the, the, the um, car into the bay very, very rapidly. Um, if we increase speed in a car park location, we um, compromise safety. So if we refer back again to the, uh, the test guidance, the examiners want to see that you can use full observations and have the car under total slow speed car control. So um, as I say, there are no additional points for doing it fast. Um, if anything, you are more likely to re receive a fail for not being in full control of the car. So um, don't misunderstand what the examiner is looking for. The, uh, the, the very best drivers will be doing it at this pace as well because this is the safe pace. So when it's uh, then the next instruction will be when it's safe to do so, move off. So again, we prepare the car as normal. So POM routine, prepare, observe, and move when safe to do so. And so you move the car forward in a straight line for about half a car length before then rotating the steering on smoothly. Okay, so let's look at that again in a bit more detail because it's important to understand what you're doing. A lot of people get very fixated on the reference points. And as we've said, if we get our starting position just slightly different, um, the reference points won't work. Um, and so people often get very frustrated at this. So, so let's just actually understand what we're doing because reference points are only a very rough guide um, by virtue of the human, human error we introduce. So let's just try it again. We'll do the turn away method. So we're going to park into these bays on the left. So I'm checking around in my mirrors as I'm doing this. And then if we look at the bay line coming through, we look roughly at our door handle, inner door handle, and we can see the bay line from my perspective appears to be aligned with that bay line. So I'm checking all around, checking over my right hand shoulder and turning the car away to a 45 degree angle. Now let's assume there was a car parked in front of me here. So that's about as far as I'm able to go. So if we now look back in our fisheye mirror, we can see the bay line we're aiming for. And so I need the back of the car to head towards that. So I, in reverse, you steer in the direction you want the car to go. So I'm gonna wind some steering lock on that way. And normally we would, just to be clear, we would do this when the car is moving just slightly. So uh, I'm well aware of dry steering. Um, now, if we look back into the fisheye mirror, 
again having checked all around checked out the back window i'm moving the car very very slowly and again just to be clear the faster you go at this stage if you've got your steering angle wrong the faster you go the further you go so the the more wrong it gets so fine clutch control is key at this point and as you can see the car is now coming round and it's slotting in nicely to that parking space again we look through the front window and we can see that the lines of the bay ahead appear to be nice and straight with the car checking down both sides and at this point we straighten the steering look out the back window and move it back very very slowly Heartbreak on, out of gear. Okay, so for fans of uh, more nocturnal parking activities, um, just to understand what's, what's going on here. Normally in, in safe progressive road driving, we try to avoid um, steering activity, sharp steering activity with um, harsh acceleration from acceleration because you're, uh, there's a trade-off between the tyre's grip and the grip that it needs to accelerate the car and the, the grip it needs to turn the car and the tighter the turn the, the more grip it needs. So in, in this sort of uh, situation if you wound steering lock onto full lock and then you're giving it the full uh, Ken block pops and bangs map and accelerating it very harshly um, the tyre is losing losing grip losing control of the car which is uh, in this instance half of the fun of it um, but clearly if you're uh, coming along and watching these sort of activities just be aware the cars are on, are on the very limit of their control um, and uh, things can go uh, badly wrong so be careful <laughs> 